All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at some of the final remaining parts of the user interface. Now, uh, one of these is going to be fairly obvious. The other one is one that you typically don't see. It's kind of a hidden part of the UI. Sure. That would be the quad menus. The quad menus. Yes, and these are pretty cool because they allow you to access some frequently used commands without having to go all the way back up to the command panel sure. to switch around different panels. Or dig through menus. Exactly. Or like that. And you access these context-sensitive menus by using the right mouse button. Oh yeah. All right. There now, are some quad menus. Right now, you see two quadrants of the quad menu, uh, as denoted by the dark gray bars. We have a transform area, which has some uh, basic operations for transforming objects. We have move, rotate, scale, select. Sure. And uh, we have a display area right now that will allow us to hide, unhide, freeze, and unfreeze, among others. Right. And uh, now, like he said, these are only two sections of the quad menu, quad sure. meaning four, meaning there are actually two other sections as well. And those are the context-sensitive ones. The reason why you don't see those right now is because we don't actually have anything on our screen uh, object-wise. Well, so let's me, fix that. Yeah, let's, let's create an object. I'm going to create a sphere. Mm -hmm. Whoosh. And now... Actually, uh, and then I'm going to convert it. <laughs> <laughs> well, go ahead and just yes, right-click uh, the mouse real quick. And sure. If you, if you right-click right now, a couple of things have changed about the quad yes, menu. Yes, that is true. We have a, a little properties area you can see. We suddenly have wire parameters that, is, uh, that has appeared. We can clone now. Some right. things that weren't previously available to us before. We also, at the very bottom, have an area that says convert to. We can convert this object to a new piece of geometry. Right. And why don't we go ahead and do that? And we're going to talk about that later, so sure, uh, yeah. don't get scared, guys. We're yeah. just going to turn this into an editable polygon. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to talk more about editable polys and methods for conversion, why you'd convert to one, uh, one type of object or another a little bit later. For now, just follow along, because the reason we're making you do this is that now, if you were to right-click on the object... Which I'll do. You get a whole bunch of new stuff. You have uh, two new quadrants of the quad menu, filling out all four sides of it now. You'll notice that in the upper left, you now have uh, some sub-objects. Yep. And uh, down in the lower left, we have uh, a new create area. So all sorts of new things, just because we have something uh, something different actually in the viewport that we're right-clicking right, upon. Right, exactly. And now there are actually other quad menus that you can access besides this default menu, and you could use modifier keys to access them, such as Control, Shift, and Alt. Okay. So uh, if I hit control, this would be the create quad menu here. Oh, oh my mistake. Well, there you go. Yeah, you, got, you can't click on the object. Right, right? there you go. So you, here you go. You have primitives up here that you can now create. So I can actually create another sphere by selecting it here and then dragging in the viewport. That's right. Now notice that the uh, if you'll go ahead and control uh, right click to bring that quad menu back up, so grab a blank spot like so, you'll notice that down in the bottom uh, right quadrant, we still have transform, which still has move, rotate, scale, the, the things that it had before. Sure. Except now the top quadrant has changed to give us access to some common uh, primitive objects. Uh, some arcs, rectangles, lines, which you'll make a lot of once you get into spline modeling, uh, planes, boxes, and spheres. That's right. And uh, now there are actually uh, there are several other menus they could bring up. So if you hit the Alt key, mm -hmm. you could bring up the uh, kind of like a little some animation tools and also uh, being able to change your coordinates as well. Sure. And then if you hit the Shift key, you could bring up some snapping tools. Oh, very nice. So looking good so far. Um, why don't I do a little quick example of something fun that I could do using just the quad menus? Cool. Do it. Show us. All right. I'm going to go ahead and uh, us. I think I'm going to go ahead and hit reset. Okay. Cool. So kind of like getting a clean slate here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to hold down Control, right click to bring up the Create Quad Menu. Menu. Excuse me. I'll go to <laughs> Sphere. Yeah. And uh, go ahead and I'll draw my sphere. I'm going to hit F4 to uh, do wireframe on shaded. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, right click once to turn off the sphere command. Mm -hmm. And I'll right click again to bring up the default quad menu. Okay. And now I'm going to convert it into an editable poly. Which, again, just a reminder, we'll talk more about editable polys a little bit later. Yeah, I'm kind of jumping the gun here just because okay. I want to have a little fun. Show something yeah, cool. no problem at all. So now if I right click again, it brings up the content context-sensitive tools menu. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go into polygon mode. Ooh. I'm going to go ahead and select all the polygons here. He's just selected a series of components that make up this object. Yeah, they would be uh, sub-objects. Yeah, right. just planting a little seed there. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to right-click again. Now I'm going to go down to what's called extrude. Now bear with me, guys. I know we haven't talked about this yet. Right. This is a modeling operation that we will discuss uh, in detail a little bit later. Right. Now I want to extrude all of these uh, things by themselves. I'm going to cancel again. Uh, bear with me. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to turn on auto key. I'm going to go down to the end of our animation uh, mm -hmm. uh, of our time slider like we talked about before. Sure. Now I'm going to right-click again, go down to extrude. 
going to extrude in the viewport and blam. Wow. I'm going to turn off auto key, rewind, and hit play. And Whoa. there you go. You've actually animated the location of sub-objects using yes. nothing but the quad menu. Well, use the time slider, too, but... A little bit. That's okay. Yeah. I understand. Just having some fun. So, yeah, uh, the quad menu is a very useful thing. I don't really expect... We don't really expect you to know uh, every single nuance of it, all the little tools you're going to find in it. Uh, again, it is context-sensitive, so it's going to change based on what you're doing. It's going to dynamically change itself to, uh, to keep things nice and smooth. Now, the other uh, thing I did want to mention about the quad menu before we completely step away from it is that you are not limited just to the quad menus that uh, Max gives you by default. Now, this is not something I want to dig too far into right now. I do want to mention you do have the power to create your own quad menus. Right, and to customize the existing quad menus. Yeah. Um, why don't we just go ahead and pull up that uh, screen go, yeah, just to up, show them? Sure, pull up the sure. window, point it out. We'll talk more about actually doing this a little bit later. Sure. Go into Customize User Interface, mm -hmm. and then go to the Quads tab, which was already selected. And over here, you can actually see the Quad menu, the default Quad menu, um, down here, and then the Transform Quadrant is highlighted right gotcha. now. Gotcha. These are all the commands below, and you could actually drag them around, and you could add new commands. Right, and we'll talk more about doing this a little later. I just wanted to point out to you that, yes, you can create your own custom Quad menus to help streamline the way you want to work in 3ds Max. Very cool. All right, let's go ahead and get out of here. There is one more aspect of the user interface that I want to talk about. Yes, sir. And it's uh, it's big, it's bright, it's bold. It's over on the left-hand <laughs> side of your screen, and we're going to show it to you. We're going to mention what it is, but we're not going to be diving into all the knobs and switches on it. And that would be the reactor panel. That's right. Now, what is the reactor panel? Uh, basically, it allows you to do things associated with the, the Dynamics physics engine that's built into Max. That's right. Uh, now, that is very cool. It is a super cool aspect. In fact, it's so cool that we can't talk about it right now, because if we did, you guys would get no work done. You'd just sit back and play with Reactor for the rest of the class. Right, and your head would explode. That's right. So um, what we're going to do is just kind of tell you if this is you know, this is the Reactor toolbar. It has several different operations and functions having to do with creating dynamic simulations inside of Max, uh, things based on true laws of physics where you don't really do as much animating as you let a simulator handle it for you. Very cool. This toolbar is here to make creating dynamic simulations much easier and much faster. But because I don't want to get into a big, long discussion of how dynamics work or any, uh, any examples just sure. right now, because that'd be way too far of a branch. All we're going to do is mention to you what this panel right, is. Right, because it is part of the UI, and it shows up by default. It shows up by default. Yeah. Um, given for a good while when we get started, there's a chance you can probably just go ahead and hide this if you want to get it out of your way. In fact, you can probably show them how to hide it. Sure. Uh, you can just, you know, just right-click, and then there's Reactor. If you uncheck that, poof, it disappears. Yep. And actually, that brings up one final part uh, that I would like to mention, and that is if you right-click on any of the blank areas up there inside the toolbar or on any of the panels, you do have a few more hidden areas of the user interface that you can bring up. Now, we're not going to be talking about each and every single one of these. Sure. But uh, some of them you know, are easier to bring up than others. You have access to the snaps, things like uh, axis constraints if you only want to control your animation on a given axis over another. Yep. Uh, rendering shortcuts, brush presets, stuff that's not so important that it had to be put right on the face of 3ds Max, but stuff that we can talk about a bit more later as we start to explore actual projects. Right. And again, if you want to bring something back, just check on it again. Boom, we have a reactor panel back yet again. That's right. Now, um, really, with that, we have explored the uh, user interface in its entirety. And so that is going to uh, wrap things up for this little section over the UI. So thanks a lot. Thanks, everyone.